Uh, I first joined the Lionel Hampton Orchestra in 1991 on baritone saxophone and then moved over to alto saxophone. Playing with Lionel Hampton was the thrill of my life. Um, it was such an honor to be in the band. I was so excited. It was the first uh, big name cat that I had ever played with and I actually got to spend a lot of personal time with Mr. Hampton. I also played clarinet so after he found that out he had me playing some uh, clarinet solos on Flying Home and Memories of You because he loved the clarinet. He actually complimented my clarinet sound one time. Uh, the, the actual phrase I, he said I can't really say and repeat but he, he said I had a, a really really great clarinet tone that he enjoyed and, and actually encouraged me to practice it more which my mother really liked. Um, Lionel has a history that goes back so far into the music. I remember sitting and talking with him about Louis Armstrong, about how he played with Louis Armstrong. And Louis Armstrong was the very first jazz music that I heard, actually. My father had the Hello Dolly tape, and I listened to that over and over again because I played clarinet. I was fascinated with the clarinet on there. It was just so swinging. It was so joyous. And then, so to have the honor of playing with Mr. Hampton, and at the time we were touring over Germany for four weeks at a time and going through America and we played the Nice Jazz Festival and the, and the Montreal Jazz Festival and so many places and during that tenure I got to meet so many great musicians. I, I can't even think Milt Hint and uh, Art Farmer. Uh, Art Blakey came in and sat in one day. We were doing the Lionel Hampton Jazz Festival and uh, it wasn't Art Blakey, it was Elvin Jones. Elvin Jones was at the festival and so Lionel, as he always says, hey, get, 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 come, you gotta come up and play, come up and come on, help, come up and play. So I'm thinking, wow, what's, what's gonna happen here? Because you know, Elvin Jones plays with, with John Coltrane. How's he gonna play with Lionel Hampton? He gets up, gates, stomps off, Hamps boogie woogie, and Elvin Jones laid down some of the deepest swing shuffle you ever heard in your life. It was swinging, it was swinging like a gate. And um, so one day I actually asked Lionel, how did how did you get the name? Where did Gates come from? He said, oh, well, when I was playing with, with Louis Armstrong as a kid, I was playing the drums, and then one day we were playing, and, and Louis Armstrong turned around and he said, L -l 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 you swing it like a gate. I'm calling you Gates. <laughs> and that's the true story. And as Lionel got older, he couldn't remember anyone's name. So he basically just called everyone Gates, you know, you just turn around and say, hey Gates, how, how you doing Gates? You know, so um, to be in this house, because I always tell people, I, you know, that I feel that Louis Armstrong and uh, some other people were the individuals who helped create and start jazz in America. And I know that Lionel Hampton was there on, on the ground running at the very beginning of this music. And um, it's important that we carry on the legacy of the Lionel Hampton Orchestra. It's, it's actually the history of America. Jazz is America's classical music. And um, the history of America and the history of black people in America and the history of jazz are all connected. So it's very important that the Lionel Hampton Orchestra should go on and people understand and feel the joy in the music. The one thing that Mr. Hampton always brought forth was this joy in the music, just like Louis Armstrong. Lionel's idol was Louis Armstrong, so he had the same persona, the same type of singing, the same type of joy, and I think it's so important and I'm so honored to be here right in this house right now.